So now, let's go ahead. Now we have the um, we have the Pinterest layout subclass, right? Number three, let's calculate the attributes for each of the cell inside the collection view. The attribute, very important. The attribute, as it turns out that inside the collection view, there are something we call UI collection view uh, cell attribute, right? The attribute of each of the cell. How does it look? How, what is the position of the cell? Those kind of things, right? We have to calculate those. So let's go ahead inside this class over here. Inside this class, I'm going to have some properties first. Number one is the number of columns. Let's say it is two, okay? And then I will make this thing a CG float because later on we have to do some calculation all in CG float. Next, let's have the cell padding, which is a CG float too. Let's make this thing 5.0, which is how much padding, right? The space between each of the cell of the item. Why is that? 5.0. And then how about we have the content height and the content width of the table, view, of the collection view, right? The content height and the content width of the collection view. And I will make this thing a private variable so that no one can access this thing, right? Can change this thing from the layout object. So private var content height, which is a CG float. And because we don't know right now, right? Right now, it looks dummy like this. It doesn't have columns yet. It doesn't have the dynamic height yet. So we don't really know why is the content height, the real height of the collection view, okay? Now, very important is that the content height is different from the visible height of the collection view right now, okay? The content height, it means that when you have all of the cells together, how much height is that? How much tall is that content, right? So you have, you have 1,000 cells or three cells, you have those three cells on top of each other. How much is that height? We have to calculate that thing, okay? So now we have the content height. Let's have private var for the content width, which is, which is a CG flow too. And because of this, we know what is the content width? We know what is the content width of this thing, right? Because the content width of the collection view is always as most as the size of the screen minus some inset of the collection view, okay? So here, let's have, let the inset of the collection view to be collection view dot content inset, like that, okay. Next thing, let's return. We are going to, oops, let me go here. Let's return our collection view that bounds like this, that bounds, that width. And we want to minus the inset of the um, collection view, right? Like this. So we have minus the inset dot left plus the inset dot right. Okay. So that is the content width of the collection views. So here, the collection view, we have some insets, just a little painting of the collection view, right? Inside here, we have a little inset. And then over here, we have also a little inset, right? So the whole width of the collection view minus, minus that inset will be the content width of the collection view, okay? All right. Now, let's move into the next one, is that we are going to override, okay, we're going to override a method we call it prepare, prepare like this. Now, this method is going to be called whenever the collection view is changed, the layout of the collection view is changed. For example, when you rotate the device, then the size of that thing, the width, those kind of things will be changed, then this thing will get caught, right? For that is just one of many instances or many situations that this method will get caught by the system, by the collection view itself. You don't have to worry about where to call it, just have to override this thing to calculate the attributes of each of the cell. So we are going to calculate the attribute of the cells, right? It means that it is instance of UI collection view layout attribute. Okay, now those attributes, it can be expensive. 
It means that maybe you want to draw stuff, maybe you want to calculate things, or maybe you want to apply layers or animations or those kind of things inside each of the item that can be expensive. So you may not want to create a bunch of attributes all over again, especially, especially if you have thousands of posts, thousands of cells, or hundreds of cells even, right? So we are going to have a private variable over here, and we'll call this thing cache attribute, or let's call that attribute cache, which is an empty array of UI collection view layout attribute, like this. Okay, UI collection view layout attribute, an empty array for now and then whenever we calculate, whenever we create those attributes for each of the item inside the collection view, then we're going to append that thing into the attribute cache, okay? Now, inside here, let's do our work. This is the most work of this whole training, so pay really close attention, okay? Number one, number one, we are going to calculate, we are going to calculate the X offset, okay? The X offset, the X uh, horizontal offset of each of the column inside the collection view. So let me open up the uh, final project. Uh, you know what? Here we go, okay? So this is the final project, right? And we have two columns over here, two columns. So each of the column here, this first column over here will have a little offsets like this, right? And then the second column will also have a larger offset, okay? Horizontally, the position, X position. So we have to calculate that. And then whenever the cell, we will have ca to calculate, okay, this cell, is it on the first column or is it on the second column? If we know it's the first column, we put it over here. If it's the second column, we put it over here, okay? So let's do that. We'll go over here, the prepare. So number one, we're going to check if the attribute cache is empty. It means that if it is really empty, if we haven't calculated all the attributes, then we don't have to create all of those attributes again. Then we just have to, um, we just have to use the cache. But if we already, we don't have the attribute, then we have to calculate it once again, right? So here, I'm all created from scratch. So here we are going to check, let, let the column width to be the content width divided by the number of columns like this, okay? And this thing is a CG float, okay? CG float, because both of those are CG float already. So, the next thing, we are going to create an array called X offsets, like this, equals to an empty array of CG floats. Why an array? Why plural? Because we have two columns. It means each of the column has one offset. So for each of the column inside zero to the number of columns, like this, from zero, to number of column, but here, pay attention. We only run it from zero to one, right? Or zero, one, because it's less than the number of columns. Why? Because for each of the offsets here, X offset, we are going to append the column, which is, oops, the column over here, right? Which is this index over here that we run through the loop, times the column width. Now, this can get really confusing right now. That is, okay, let's build this thing to make sure that we don't have any error. By uh, zero, two, oh, okay, this thing, let's put it as an int of number of columns like that, right? And then the column here, let's make that CG float of column because the zero here is an int. The number of columns is, we put it as a CG float, right? So here we have to change that into CG float. Now, why do you have to do this way, right? So let's do the calculation. Let's do the code by hand, okay? So column is going to be zero and one, right? So the first time it is zero, the first column, column is zero then the X offset is going to be 
zero times the column width, right? The column width, but zero times the column width is zero. And yes, the actual offset of the first column is zero because it's right there at the edge, at the edge of the collection view, right? When x is, when column is one, it means the second column, the last column, then the x offset of this column over here is going to be one times the column width, which is this guy over there, right? So the x offset of this thing will be this guy. Make sense? All right, now let's go ahead and do our next thing. Now we have the x offset of each of the column. Let's have the y offset of each of the column too. So var, let's have the y offset to be a CG float. And here I'm going to use CG float like this and I'm going to use a repeating method in uh, array. So we want to repeating zero with a count of number of columns like this. Okay, I'm not sure if we have to use integer, but let's just put there. All right, so now the y offset, the y offset of all of the columns, of course, it's always zero, always to the top. Okay, next thing, let's say, or at least initially, right? Next thing, let's have var column to be zero like this, and then we will run the calculation, okay? Now, we're going to loop through each of the item in the first section of the collection view. Why the first section, you may ask? Well, because in this app, I will use one section because the collection view, you know, it may have different sections. So you have to pay attention when you apply this thing to this code right here to your project, right? So uh, if you have multiple sections, then you have to do a double loop like that, right? For each of the section inside all the sections and then for each of the item inside the section. Now I only, blah, blah, <laughs> I only have one section, then I will, enumerate or I will loop through all of the items inside that section. Okay, so for item inside zero to collection view dot collection view, collection view dot number of items inside the section zero. Again, we know we only have one section. Let's make some space here. Okay, so we have the collection view, we have the number of items. All right, now, when we have this, let's have the index path of that exact item. Let's index path to be an index path with, oops, index path with the item of item inside the section like this, right? Oops, inside the section zero, like that. Okay, now okay, you look to the section, that will be the section variable. Then let's calculate the frame of the attribute of each of the cell. So let's the width to be the column width minus the cell padding times two. Okay, so here I'm going to calculate, calculate the frame of this attribute. And then let's the photo height to be something over here. Right, something over here because we have the photo. We have each of the photo. We want to make sure that we know what is the height of that photo. Okay, and then we also want to know which is let the caption height to be something like 0, 0 right now. Right, so we need to know what is the photo height and the caption height. The caption is what the caption is this little text and the profile picture and those text over here. We have to know that in order to scale up these things. Okay, so we need to know that somehow. Now after that, we're going to, I'm going to walk you through this and we'll reverse this process on how to calculate the photo height and the caption height. Okay, so it, assume that we already have the photo height. Assume that we already have the clutch of uh, the caption height. So let's have let the height to be let the height. Okay, you know what? I'm going to move the width over here and the height over there. So we know that okay, the photo height and the caption height belongs to the post, and then the width and height will be each of the cell. The height 
of the cell is going to be um, cell panning like this plus our um, photo height, right? We need the photo height plus our caption height, right? So we have the cell panning over here, right? Each of the cell plus the photo height plus the caption height and then we have to plus another padding. So plus cell padding like this. Okay, so we have that height. Now, after we got the height, let's have the frame to be a CG, right? With the X position. X position is X offset subscript column, like that. The column variable is over here, right? So we know we move through that and then we find, okay, if the X offset, if this post belongs to the first column, then it should be the x-offset should be that small, right, zero. If it belongs to the second column, the x 